At this time, we've talked about how to add and subtract polynomials. Well, our next operation that we need to talk about is how do we multiply polynomials. But before we get into polynomials, meaning prefix of poly or many terms, let's go back and see an actual example of this that you've seen before. So here's my review example. This one is actually a monomial by a monomial, a one-term polynomial times a one-term polynomial. But we never thought of it that way when we did this in the exponent videos. When you worked through these type of problems on your homework, you never thought about them being polynomials. You just multiplied the like terms. And that's exactly what we're going to do, same thing now. I just multiply my like terms. So I take negative 10 times 1 half gives me negative 5. C squared times C squared, I add the exponents, gives me C to the fourth. And D to the fifth times D squared gives me D to the seventh. Again, I just add the exponent. So we've actually already done a version of this in the past in the exponent videos, but this was a very specific version. We only saw one-term polynomial times a one-term polynomial. So let's see how to do this exactly when we maybe see more than one term in each polynomial. The first way that we're going to multiply polynomials is by using the keyword distributing here. And we've seen this word before. We've learned it in the properties. We learned that when we had a times b plus c, where b and c are in the parentheses, we could distribute or feed the dog and feed the cat. So we would take it to be a times b plus a times c. It's the same thing when we have it in a polynomial version. The thing to note here is that we're going to use this word distributing when we have a one-term polynomial or when we have a monomial times any other number of terms in a polynomial. So if it's a one-term polynomial by anything else, the word that we're going to be using is distributing because of the distributing property. So in this example, I'm going to take my monomial or my one-term polynomial of negative 8p to the fifth, and I'm going to distribute it through. And I'm just going to multiply like terms back when we did with exponents or before we even thought about these as polynomials in general. So first, I have negative 8p to the fifth times negative 7p cubed. Negative 8 times negative 7 gives me 56. p to the fifth times p to the third gives me p to the eighth because I just add the exponents. Then I take my negative 8p to the fifth and I multiply it by negative 3p. Negative 8 times negative 3 gives me positive 24. p to the fifth times p gives me p to the sixth. Last but not least, I need to take that negative 8p to the fifth and multiply it by negative 1. Negative 8 times negative 1 gives me 8, and my p to the fifth just carries over, and these are both positive because my negatives cancel out. Confirm that you are still in descending order, which you should be if it starts out that way, and confirm that you don't have any like terms that you can combine at this time. And we don't. So we have distributed our negative 8p to the fifth through, meaning we have multiplied these two polynomials. So we've just worked through an example of multiplying polynomials using that keyword distributing. Let's move on to another keyword here. And this keyword is actually an acronym. It is FOILING. So a lot of times people see this word FOIL and they wonder why I'm bringing a kitchen item into the math classroom. And it all goes back to an acronym. So each of those letters stands for something or stands for a process that I'm going to use here. And the process is the best order to multiply these out. So my F stands for my first. I'll multiply my first term first. O stands for my outside or outer. I stands for my inside or inner. 
and L stands for my last two terms or last. Now, I'm only going to use this keyword foiling or foil when I again have two very specific types of polynomials multiplied by each other. And we can hopefully pick that out in my two examples that I've given you here. I have two terms here and two terms there. Same thing in example two, two by two. So this needs to be a two by two, or since we know those vocabulary words, it needs to be a binomial times a binomial. If it is, that's when we get to use the word foiling. If it is not a binomial times binomial, or if it is not a two by two, this is not the process that we're going to use. Okay, so let's see exactly how this process works. So starting with my acronym first. So I look at my first term in this polynomial, and I look at my first term in my second polynomial, and that's what I multiply first. 5x times 6x gives me a 30x squared. Moving on to my outer or outside. I take my outside two terms and I multiply them. So that gives me my outside. 5x times negative 5 gives me a negative 25x. Next, I look at my inside terms, or negative 9 times 6x. Negative 9 times 6 gives me a negative 54x. And last, I take my last terms and multiply them. So negative 9 times negative 5 gives me a 45. So I have multiplied these two binomials in my FOIL order. First, outside, inside, last. Now the reason that we suggest this order is because of two reasons. If we look at the order of our polynomial, it has put it in descending order for us. So I don't have to worry about that from here on out. Also, if I look at my two middle terms, these are like terms, and they will be that way most of the time. So to simplify this and to get my final answer, all I need to do is combine those middle two terms. So I have 30x squared minus 79x, because I combined the middle two terms, plus 45. So I've foiled this guy, I've combined like terms, I've confirmed my answer is in descending order, and therefore I have my final answer to this example. Now let's move on to example two. We already did say that it was a binomial times binomial, so I will do this one by using foiling. And to get you some extra practice, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. So multiply my first two terms. 4w cubed times 4w cubed gives me 16w to the sixth. I multiply the numbers and add the exponents. On the outside, I have 4 times 2 gives me 8 w cubed times z, those are not like variables, so I just need to copy down what I have, which is a w cubed and a z. Inside gives me a negative 8w cubed and a z. And then last, negative 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4, and z times z gives me a z squared. Now, if I look at my middle two terms, these are like terms. But these are special because they are exactly the same but opposite signs, which means that these two terms end up canceling each other out. So my final answer of this problem is 16w to the 6 minus 4z squared. And it is in alphabetical or descending order, so that is my final answer. But I want to go back and I want to look at this problem at the beginning. If I investigated this problem with a little more detail, I would have noticed that these two binomials are identical, 
but my middle two signs are opposite of each other. This is so special that it has its own vocabulary word that goes with it. These guys are called conjugates. Conjugates are the same two binomials or two-term polynomials with the opposite middle signs. And they're special because of what we see down here, because we see that these two guys cancel. Now, right now, we're just going to follow our FOIL process, and notice they're going to cancel each time. But eventually, we're going to use these conjugates to our advantage. I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, we're going to do one more example of FOILing, and then we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials and generalized versions, meaning what if we can't use the word distributing or what if we can't use the word FOILing, then how do we just multiply those two polynomials overall?